Hello everyone and welcome to Art Smart. Few things have shown how art has changed over the last hundred plus years better than the baseball uniform. Baseball uniforms have changed quite a bit since their origins in the latter part of the 1800s. Uh, but when we're looking at the uniforms and especially their early history, we can definitely identify artistic styles that started and truly developed over the course of time. The New York Knickerbockers were the first team to utilize uniforms, and they did it on April the 4th, 1849. And they chose to have a wool uniform, which obviously they changed out of quickly because those had to be very hot. Uh, and they used flannel shirts and straw hats. We have to keep in mind that when it was the latter part of the 1800s, flannel shirts didn't necessarily have the same uh, connotation that they have today as being a uh, kind of recreational type of, of dress. Uh, they were seen as somewhat decorative at that time. And so it was definitely showing that at that point in the 1800s, uh, definitely having stripes and patterns was a very modern way to dress. And of course, straw hats were very much in vogue at that time. Over the course of time, the uniform quickly adapted and changed. Uh, there were several developments that happened over the next several decades. For example, in the latter part of the 1800s, teams realized that they needed to have two separate uniforms, one for home and one for away. Now, it was very uh, in style at that time to have clean, pristine white to show that uh, this is a team that was proud to represent its city. And so it was a very natural thing for teams to choose white to be their home uniform. But what to wear on the road was more of a question. Now, a lot of times the uniforms were not cleaned very quickly or very, uh, or quite frankly, often as teams were traveling around. And so they chose gray to hide dirt. So when you see a baseball team that is playing on the road and it has a gray uniform, that is because the team is, uh, was on the road and may not have had the best opportunity to get their clothes washed before the next game. And so they would wear gray in order to hide the dirt. Uh, there were also different uniforms and patterns for different positions. Certain teams during the 1880s decided to try out different uniform patterns for each position, and it just was a mess. Uh, teams had just all kinds of crazy colors and uh, garish uh, patterns going against each other, and it was very quickly abandoned. But it was definitely a unique idea to have each separate position have its own separate design with different striping and different colors. It was quite strange. If you've ever wondered to yourself why there are teams like the Red Sox or the White Sox, that is simply because they realized that stockings were a great way to show off their team's colors, especially when uniforms in the beginning t were all typically white and relatively similar looking. They had these different colors on their socks to show what city they were from and what colors they were representing. And certain team names just picked up on those colors. There are all kinds of other changes that happened. Of course, when you get into the early part of the 1900s and you start seeing modernism hit and clean lines being very popular in art, all of a sudden you see pinstriping on uniforms. The Yankees may be the most famous example of that, but actually the Brooklyn Bridegrooms and of course the Detroit Wolverines, which everyone has heard of, they were actually the first ones to wear striped uniforms. I could go on and on about baseball uniforms, which have changed over the course of time, but I think this suffices to describe how the uniform got started. Baseball uniforms are beautiful in their own way. They are artful in their own way. And I definitely think that you could learn quite a bit by simply looking at the uniforms. You can learn quite a bit about American history and art history. Have a great day, everyone, and make sure you continue to art smart.